Bowing here, I find my rest. And without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you. Life can bring many difficult situations, domestic violence, addictions, poverty, and even sexual abuse by your loved ones. Welcome, Amy Cabo and The Cure. Good afternoon and welcome to The Cure Radio Show. I'm your host, Amy Cabo, with my amazing partner, Boris. Hello, everybody. This show is intended to expose the truth, educate, and provide comfort. God was the only cure for me and we hope we can be there for each other. We address the joys of life and its challenges with God, our omnipotent Father, who is always looking out for us as our constant refuge. Life has trials, but with him above all things, who loves us dearly, there is eternal joy and hope. That song was, I Need You, by Chris Tomlin. When we struggle against weakness in this place of exile, he is hope that pushes us in every trial that extra mile. As our refuge and only path that can make it right, how we need you to carry on this toughest fight. To understand that everything that is has great meaning. Toward our good and growth Every cross is redeeming. Be still, he is God. The world bows as he lifts his voice to the rescue. Trust his will, no matter what, rejoice. Today we will be talking about clutter and our relationship with God. And our special guest, Ellen Koff, brings her decades of experience, practical experience, and down to earth teacher's heart to an encouraging and non-judgmental approach to personal and spiritual growth around a problem many people share. As in her new book released, Get Organized, God's Way. I know I need that book. (laughs) Eileen, welcome to The Cure. So blessed to have you with us. what, What a blessing it is to be here. Thank you so much. I so praise God for this for this honor. I give him all the glory. As do I. And what an amazing topic. Organization. Don't we all need it in our lives? And it's so much easier when we have our things organized and our life organized. Even better, our thoughts organized and even, even more so, our priorities organized. <laughs> but d- does... Um, does Clutter sometimes reflect our relationship with God? Oh, it always reflects, not just sometimes. It always reflects our relationship with God. Um, so, so you said something about the thoughts, and that's how it starts. Um, our, our lifestyles are built on the way we think, and our thought processes are, are built on the, what we believe to be true. And so the world has entrapped us to believing in, in the Bible study, Get Organized God's Way. I, I cite hundreds of, of examples of how God, um, God's Word is, is actually absolutely contradicting what the world has taught us yes. uh, from a practical standpoint. And my, uh, my position, uh, my purpose that God has given me is one of a stop sign. <laughs> uh, what I do is uh, when I meet with a client either um, on site or, or I do this virtually, I basically hold up a stop sign and have them look at what truly they think is important. And then I say, now why do you think this way because the why you think this way is is um is built on what they believe to be true and so my stop sign basically says okay 
So let's look to see what God says about the way yes. you're thinking and the way you're believing. And so because we're highly be, influenced by the environment. Yes, yes, and especially kids with peer pressure. It's not just the peer pressure. It's not just the environment. It's 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 also handed down generationally. It's what our parents teach us because that's what their parents taught them. It's my generational yeah. problem. There, there doesn't even have to be a person involved. The enemy, which I call pickpocket, he infuses thoughts into your head, thinking that what's bad, it's good. You want to, you know, the, let's say you're in confession and you confess some sins, and the priest says, "Well, at least you're not killing anybody," because he sees you <laughs> feeling remorseful, and he's feeling That's like right. the devil played on his compassion. He feels like he's doing something good for you, but be careful how you take that. Does that mean I shouldn't be remorseful? Are my sins not a big deal? Should I not be confessing them anymore? So, yeah, it's it. There doesn't need to be a person involved. It, it can no, just there, uh, there, and it, there usually is not. There usually is not. Let me give you an example. I'm doing a. Um, I'm on the Messianic Lamb Network every Thursday at one o'clock. There's a little bug there, um, but this session coming up is because what what's in our brain right now is Thanksgiving. Right. We're all busy with, you know, our holiday preparations and all those things that are going to be coming up very, very, very quickly. And um, so so I'm doing a whole a whole thing on giving thanks. You know, what does that really mean? And giving comes before the thanks. (laughs) So I could go on and on (laughs) on this. But but what but one of this is is in Proverbs 1124. It says, One man gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. So that's that's an example of that if we give, we are blessed even greater. Because God is looking to see how his body is is reacting to the blessings that he has given to us. Well, St. Francis Francis says you have to give to receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in giving that we receive, and it's in dying that we're burnt, born to eternal life. You can't That's love correct. yourself. You you can't put yourself first because you're you're not you're only get the world can only take you so far, and God could take you to eternal life and 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 true joy and peace that this world cannot provide. It doesn't matter well, all the money that you have in the world. Everybody. Yeah, but you explain that to everybody that's got stuff all around them. <laughs> that's <laughs> clutter. In their closets. Yeah. yeah you ex- that's... try to explain that to them, and it's very difficult. And we're talking, we'll continue talking more about organizational skills with Eileen Koff. Please stay with us. We will be right back with Amy Cavill and The Cure. continue with Amy Cabo and The Cure. Welcome back and thanks for tuning in. That was If You Only Knew, Stacy Riddle. If you only knew my past, you would see he loves everyone. And when his will is done, we overcome. The war is won. A walking miracle, all for him, my greatest declaration divine inspiration, and the most holiest liberation. My God, my Lord, Jesus Christ, only known salvation, most high defining purpose, O master of creation, sweet mercy, sweet love, mercy gifted and guided for our sake. Thou who lives my life, my world, yours to take. We will continue talking about organizational skills with Eileen Koff 
author of Get Organized, God's Way. But all things should be done decently and in order. First Corinthians, Corinthians 14.40. Aileen, what is the root of the cause of our, our cluttering that we get so easily swayed by the thoughts that the devil puts in our minds and the, 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 the experiences that we've had, how he uses our past and how he uses influences and how he sets traps. He makes situations seem a certain way and we have to hold back. Wait a second. We shouldn't jump to the gun. We should wait and see what, you know, what is it that God said to do? Um, well, that's, I'm trying to get a handle on, on the question. Um, it's, it's the, the, um, the root cause. Satan. Yeah, the root cause is individual. There is no one cause for clutter. In other words, um, in in the um, the group called the Institute for Challenging Disorganization, they basically hold two camps of what causes clutter in people's lives. The first one is situational disorganization, and that could be a any type of a situation that has changed, a birth of a, a new birth, right, or a death. Or, you know, you lost your job or you're moving or all these things where you might have had a very well organized and planned environment uh, all of a sudden becomes chaotic. And sometimes um, there could be two instances like you got sick and, and then and then there was another thing that got thrown at you and it just becomes insurmountable and you just don't know like how to get back to, to normal. But you know how to get back to normal. It's just going to take time. That's one group. The second, you know, the second group is is chronic disorganization, and these are people that have just uh, that are just born with an inability to organize their environment the way they they need to. Um, you can teach them A, B, C, and D, but they do not follow the normal, practical, linear type of organizational things that you see, you know, posted on on media or on TV. It just doesn't work for them. So so this can be an ADHD or they can be going through depression or they can be going through all kinds of things that are not associated with the normal situational disorganization. So how things got there, the way they got there, really is going to depend on the person and you know, how to get back out of it. But what makes Get Organized God's Way different from all of the magazines and books and things is that this is Scripture. This is what God says. This is, this is a relationship that we have with our stuff. And our stuff represents the blessings and the things that God has given to us. But we don't, like you said, we don't look at it in terms of wow. God's blessings. We look at it everything. Just in terms of we just go out. Everything. We don't realize that everything's a blessing. The fact that it used to be that we can rest to get better when we were sick, that was a blessing. Nowadays, it, that doesn't work very well, does it? We actually have to get up and move around if we want to stay healthy. We have to work for it. It takes a little harder work. It takes more sacrifice. The fact that we can exercise and our bodies will get healthier, that we'll lose weight. And that's a blessing. And the fact that we can even make the right decisions or think clearly or have any memory or even be smart or anything like that, or even have peace in our mind. And that's a blessing. And so when you're speaking uh, clutter, I'm thinking of clutter in your house and you're speaking cycle terms and people might not understand what's, what you mean. It's so deep. But if we put it in simple ways, it's like having clutter, you have your garage cluttered or you have an area in your closet cluttered and then it gets more and more cluttered and it, then it builds up and then you feel overwhelmed and you don't know what to do with that clutter. And that's how we can lose our way. And that's how we can lose ourselves when we allow other things of the world to come into us. Uh, I call those demons, by the way, uh, thanks, uh, you know, courtesy of sin. But, you know, and then you, we get farther and farther away from God where our thinking starts to become disorganized. And then we're not able to think clearly in the terms of God's precepts and God's will. That's correct. That's Is that correct. a good summary? 
Yeah, okay. that's a very good summary. I would also I would also state that since we're talking about you. you know the world and and Satan's you know you know infiltration of of the peace that, of God that wants to come into our lives. Uh, in one of my chapters, I call it organizing with the sword. And basically, it is not just the clutter that we bring into our lives, but it could be absolutely certain objects that we bring into our lives that have a satanic or has an atmosphere that causes that, that confusion, that causes that um, inability to think clearly. Uh, and one thing objects are you, are you thing, talking uh, objects halloween just yeah, happened certain, be careful with those candies yes. you know that they put curses yes. in and and in those candies be careful what you bring into yes. your home absolutely uh, and so there's all kinds of things that people have that are, do not even understand i mean our world today has so glorified other religions and so people i've seen this so many times in christians homes different um different objects that they've gotten on vacation are different yeah. things that they dream catchers in, in dream catchers that's yes, something else yes. that you don't realize yeah. you're playing you're playing with the occult and that's, that's correct. Uh, dangerous territory but we'll continue talking more about organizational and how to organize ourselves i, I guess with eileen no Koff, <laughs> author of the get organized god's way thank you we will be right back with Amy Cavill and The Cure. You never left my side You got my attention And you open up my eyes I pray to me a day Cause I'm scared for my life I may not understand it now But I trust you, Lord I trust in you Now Welcome. we will continue with Amy Cabo and The Cure. Welcome back and thanks for being with us. That was God I Know You Got Me by Whitney Martinez. We know to be in the greatest hands, oh, our sweet love, taking care of every need, protection sent from above. Whether earned or not, never did we ever do without driving force truly devout and reliable throughout. Living fire, Holy Spirit, you have our highs and lows, our comfort and our strength keeping us so close. Every tear turns joy, making his presence clear. Our hope and provided eternal peace is near. We will continue talking about organizational skills with Eileen Koff, author, of get organized God's way. Through sloth, the roof sinks in, and through indolence, the house leaks. Ecclesiastes 10, 18. And yes, I was one of those people who thought the dream catchers were pretty, and it looks cute, and I used to hang it over my bed. Little did I know, education is key. <laughs> Uh, it looks pretty. Of course, the devil's going to make it look cute or pretty, or it, it's, it, he entices you to, to fall into traps and to do things that are not good for you. But watch out with that dark cloud over you. Check yourself and check your house. <laughs> uh, there's something we can do about it. There's something, and we could always have our house blessed, by the way. Uh, priests will catch that. But what, Aileen, what if somebody has already a lot of disorganizational way of thinking and is full of clutter and is not successful. What what can they do? What resources can they find? Uh, well, um, so let me state your, your question is, if they have already a lot of clutter and they want to get ready, they're ready to, um, and they're unsuccessful. They're turning to alcohol. They're turning to bad influences or okay. friends that give bad advice. And they're just in a rut. They can't get out. Right. Um, well, it's that's a that's again. It's it's uh, it's an individual. It's a complicated you know question on on the individual. But um, 
it's it's re- it's really has to come. I mean, you know, a lot of times people ask me, you know, I mean, has there ever been a client that you've not been able to help? You know, is 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 there ever you know a situation that you've gone into and it's just been a, a, a you know a total letdown on both your parts? And I would say yes, there has been because the bottom line is that unless the the person who has all of the clutter buildup is ready to change the way they're thinking. They're ready to it change takes a the change way of perception. They, yes, change the way they believe about the things going forward in their life. It's sort of like I ask them, what is your vision for the room? Or what is your vision for your life going forward? And if they haven't come with a, you know, something that's concrete or something that they can visualize uh, easily, then it becomes very difficult for anything to occur that's that's going to last that's going to give them the peace that they are speaking for and, and you so know what's I, a, you know what's a barrier speaking from firsthand experience is feeling defeated and for many years i was conditioned to believe that the things that i've went through they were they, they were a curse or they had me that i was broken because of it and that it was a bad thing and it was very difficult for me to even continue having experienced what I did. And then I learned God's word. And he said, well, the cross is a blessing and it's meant to make you holier and it's meant to sanctify you. And I was with you all along and I protected you. So you're still here. You're still alive. And so when I saw, when I saw it in a different way and I thought, well, the more I suffer, the better, the closer I get to God, the closer that, the more that I understand, the more compassionate that I can be, the more that I'll be able to help others, the more gifts that I would get in the long run, just because I accepted them with love. And so when I saw it in that way, it was a life changer. It turned my life around that I got, I put myself in a in a position that of helping others rather than focusing on myself, trying to help myself. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. Um, That's why I do what I do. It's, you know, it's, it's reaching out and helping others. It's, it's really building the kingdom because I always say that when you're better, we are all better. You know, if we are one body, then the body is better when each of us individually gets the shalom or the peace that God is bringing into our our environment. Let me just give you a quick example of that shalom and that peace. Um, in in the uh, study Get Organized God's Way, I have an acronym called S H A L O and M Shalom. Um, it comes from my background as a Messianic Jew, and I just uh, I just just leaped with joy when God showed me this acronym of how I can, that it's not hard. Getting organized is not a difficult procedure. I mean, that's why you have all these books out there. It's just well, like yeah, no and also it. it's, it's very important because I learned that your sin does not affect just you. It affects everyone around you. And, and you're right. That was we a very good point that you made. And so we've come to the end of the show. I've just been told. <laughs> Um, but thank you so much, Eileen. And if, if you have any last words, and oh, we don't have time for last words. Uh, so we will start. Thank you so much, Eileen, and God bless you. And so God we'll finish you. with the prayer. Jesus, I'm so glad that you love me the same, with or without my clutter. But I know I will love you much better with much less clutter. So very amen, I pray. If you're triumphant and tender name, amen. Amen. Please check our podcast, The Cure with Amy Cabo, whatever podcasts are in our app, The Cure with Amy Cabo. This is Amy Cabo. You have been listening to The Cure. And I guess we finished a little bit earlier. My timer was off. <laughs> it's okay. So now, last, last 20 seconds, words of advice, Eileen. Thank you to our listeners for being (laughs) with us. And until next Sunday, much love. Give it your best. Be as kind as possible to everyone, including yourself. True and steadfast to your values. Don't lose hope. Keep the faith.
Thank you for listening to The Care with Amy Cabo. You can check out Amy's latest book, God is the Care, on Amazon. And please check our website, godisthecare.com.